Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. This is Dr. Rahul Shah, you're back again with another video for you guys. Uh, so today's topic is going to be on LCPD and SCFE that is leg calf Perthes disease and slip capital femoral epiphysis of how to understand and be able to differentiate them separately. And before I get started, I really want to thank you guys for the amazing support that you have been giving to my channel. It really has been very motivating and uh, I got a lot of positive responses and a lot of great comments that they love the way uh, we discussed the ABG that's arterial blood gases with the help of the family format. Uh, it was an easy way to remember using the story. So that's something uh, that I'm going to do again is to explain LCBD and SCFE. I am going to have a story that kind of makes it easy for you. So I call it the Krishna story. So let's get started on this. So let's get started. So we are going to be talking about LCPD and SCFE in the Krishna story. The reason why I call it the Krishna story is when we talk about LCPD and SCFE, the questions that are going to be important are going to be the presentation, the limitation. So LCPD, like in Hindu mythology, Krishna is a God. So as kids, you know, when a child is small, young, you know, around the age of two, three, four, five, they are dressed up as Krishna. Like, you know, you would do uh, dress up kids like Santa Claus on Christmas. So during Krishna's birthday, they dress up the kid like Krishna. So that's the Krishna story. So the age group is about, you know, from two to about 10 years. And the presentation is what, you know, and Krishna plays a flute. So in leg calf Perthes disease, the presentation is like Krishna playing a flute in which the leg or the limb is into flexion, adduction and external rotation. So there's going to be flexion, adduction and external rotation. So the child presents like Krishna. So the presentation is flexion, adduction and external rotation, which is also known as fader. The limitation with LCPD is going to be the opposite of the presentation. So it is going to be the flexion becomes extension. The adduction becomes abduction and external rotation becomes internal rotation. So the presentation is like Krishna, which is flexion, adduction and external rotation. The limitation is extension, abduction and internal rotation. So that's how Krishna presents. But what is Krishna's favorite food? Krishna loves to have butter. So when a child around the age of 2 to 10 has a lot of butter, by the time they reach their teens, they are going to be they are going to be obese. So as they reach their teens from the age of 10 to about 15 or 17, they are going to have presentation where a child who had butter is obese and now comes home from school and sits on the couch lazy. So when the child was small, everybody is like, oh yeah, Krishna, you're a face of God. So the child was pampered, had a lot of butter. So he gained weight and now he comes from school and just doesn't want to do anything and just is on the couch lazing around. So when he's lazing on the couch, as you can see the picture, the presentation is going to be abduction and external rotation. So the pre presentation is going to be abduction and external rotation. So in these patients, the limitation is going to be again in internal rotation. With LCPD and SCFE, both of them, the limitation is going to be in internal rotation and abduction. So the limitation is flexion, abduction and internal rotation. I hope that story kind of connects. Just to review the whole thing, when a child is young, they are dressed like Krishna between the age of 2 to 10. So that's where the presentation is going to be like Krishna, which is flexion, adduction and external rotation, which is the age group for LCPD. The limitation is opposite of the presentation. So it's going to be extension, abduction and internal rotation. Krishna has butter. So the child is going to present with a history of obesity. And once they come back from school, they are going to be on the couch with abduction and external rotation. 
So the limitation that's going to be abduction and external rotation is a presentation in SCFE. And the limitation is going to be flexion, abduction, and internal rotation. So let's try to summarize all of this. So when we talk about LCPD, the age group and the background is going to be about 2 to 10 years. Whereas with SCFE, it's about 10 to 15 years and patient is more likely to be obese. What happens with the pathology in LCPD? LCPD is a vascular necrosis of the femur, which basically means that the blood supply to the head of femur is kind of scarce or it's kind of affected because of which there is necrosis that is happening. Whereas with SCFE, the head of the femur slips of, slips of the shaft. So at the epiphyseal plate, because the epiphysis has still not occurred, it's kind of easy. And because of trauma, it kind of shifts. So the mechanism of injury with LCPD is going to be gradually occurring without history of trauma. It's a cold injury. The blood supply will slowly kind of, the blood supply stops and there is slow necrosis. So there is no history of trauma. It's a gradual onset. Whereas with SCFE, there would be a traumatic onset. Like, as the name suggests, it is a slipped capital. So a slip doesn't happen over months or years. It's going to be like one incidence that causes it to slip. So that's going to be traumatic onset. Like the history could be jumping, falling or playing with friends. That would kind of be the history with SCFE. Again, kind of to summarize with LCPD, the presentation is going to be fader. That's flexion, like Krishna, flexion adduction and external rotation the limitation is going to be opposite of it which is extension abduction and internal rotation when we talk about scfe the presentation is the child is like we already discussed is going to have butter present with the history of obesity and then be sitting in external rotation as the primary one and abduction and the limitation in these patients is going to be flexion, abduction, and internal rotation. As you can see in both LCPD and SCFE, the common presentation, the common limitation in both these conditions is going to be abduction and internal rotation. That's going to be common in both of them. The other features that we have with LCPD that, you know, the other symptoms that could be seen is that the patient would complain or there would be complaints of pain in the groin region and medial thigh. The x-ray shows crescent sign on the head of femur and there would be a psoatic limb or also called as an antalgic gait, which is a painful gait. With SCFE, there is pain in the thigh region and there is absence of gluteal fold and the patient may also present with Trendlenburg gait. So LCPD and SCFE are really interesting conditions and super important if you are studying this with respect to the NPTE exam. So I hope this whole thing and the story kind of helps you. Uh, and I would again highly appreciate you to you know send feedbacks and suggestions and also suggest the next few topics um, it it really helps me you know decide what to do next and that's it thank you so much and stay blessed bye bye